Hello, welcome to chapter four of The Nature of Code. So this chapter is all about particle systems. And here's the good news for you. I am not introducing any new concepts, really. I mean, there is the new concept of the particle system, but ultimately we're just reusing all the code from the previous chapters and looking at ways to organize that code more efficiently and effectively. So what is a particle system? In 1982, William T. Reeves, a researcher at Lucasfilm, was working on the movie Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Much of the movie revolves around the Genesis device, a torpedo that when shot at a barren, lifeless planet has the ability to reorganize matter and create a habitable world for colonization. During the sequence, a wall of fire ripples over the planet while it is being terraformed. The term particle system was coined in the creation of this particular effect. Fascinating. Thanks, Spock. <laughs> if, like me, you find the history of computer graphics fascinating, um, I would really encourage you to go read the original 1983 paper, Particle Systems, a Technique for Modeling a Class of Fuzzy Objects. Um, everything that from the first two chapters of Nature of Code, you'll find there in that paper. Position, velocity, that's what makes a particle, as long as all the other sort of techniques and tricks that they used in creating this effect in the film Wrath of Khan. Getting started with the code, I don't really have a lot of work to do. I have most everything that makes a particle from my mover class in chapter two. Um, but I do want to look at this list of attributes and see what I need to add, sort of zero, focusing in on this number seven, the lifetime property. I should also mention that I have actually made this video before in, in a way. I have a coding challenge called Simple Particle System, and I would encourage you to review that, but that video didn't make use of the concepts of vectors and forces. So what I want to do here is take the same idea of a simple particle system, but bring in the examples from chapters one and two of The Nature of Code. I'm going to start with this example from the first video of chapter two. So this is just a simple example with one mover object responding to wind and gravity forces. And the very first thing I'm going to do is just change the name from mover to particle. From this point on, my particle class will always be in a file called particle.js. Just to simplify for a moment, I'm going to remove the wind force. We might want to add that back in later, but I'm just going to leave only this gravity force. Going back to the paper, I would encourage you to think about adding some of these other properties related to size and color and the shape of your particles. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you, the viewer, and focus in on the lifetime property. Now I'm making the decision to specifically start the lifetime at 255. This is because I want to tie the lifetime to the transparency. So the idea is that the particle will start with a transparency of 255, fully opaque, and fade away over time. Meaning in the update function, I want it to decrease. And then in the show function, instead of having the alpha hard-coded as 100, I will set the alpha to the object's lifetime and let's watch it fade away. Now, the stroke is not fading, so perhaps I'll add that as well. And the particle's gone. The kinds of effects that are typically made with a particle system generally result from small dots <laughs> in the canvas, so I'm going to reduce also the size of the particle and set that to four. The next step is just making many particles. And the only thing I need to do that is an array. Now, I've done this already in the nature of code, but here I want to take a very specific look at some of the functionality associated with arrays in JavaScript and P5.js. So here is the revised code, still with one particle, but instead that one particle has been added to an array. If working with arrays of objects is new to you, I would refer you back to my intro to coding with P5.js video series where I have a whole section about arrays and objects. And there's a lot of different things I could try here. Maybe I want to create a burst of particles and just add, say, 100 immediately in setup. Now, incidentally, even though I added 100 particles, I don't see 100. It's because all of them are starting at exactly the same spot with exactly the same initial velocity. So to really see the effect, it probably makes sense for me to go to the particle class and have their velocities be something random. And look at this really sort of like strange effect that happened that I didn't anticipate. Because the magnitude of all of those initial velocities is one, they all burst out into this sort of perfect ring. Now I'll give them a random set of initial velocities 
and we can see they burst out in a more chaotic fashion. So this is starting to resemble something like a burst of a firework, and I might also refer you to, I have a whole coding challenge about doing a firework simulation. That could be something that, as an exercise for this chapter, you choose to create from these particle systems examples. But rather than a single burst, it's more common for a particle system style effect to constantly emit particles. So one new particle per frame, or five new particles per frame. So I could take this for loop and put it into draw, and I probably don't want to make 100 new particles every time through draw. So let me actually just go back and make this one. So one new particle each time through draw. And we can see we have this constant stream of particles that are being emitted. I could make this five particles per frame, and it's just like a lot more particles coming out. Now, even though they're fading away, and it sort of seems like it's the same amount of particles, in the canvas, it's starting to run really, really slow. That's because when particles fade away, I'm not actually removing them from the array. So the length of that array right now is really, really big, and it's just going to run slower and slower and slower over time. So I need to add something to remove particles from the array when they're finished. The first step, I think, would be to add a function to the particle class itself, um, and I will call this function finished. And it's just going to return whether or not the lifetime is less than zero. So it returns true when the lifetime is less than zero. That's when it's finished. Um, and it's false if the lifetime is greater than zero. And just as a quick little test to make sure this is working, I'm going to write if this.finished, fill it with a green color just to see that as they fade away, they turn green. But that's not what I want to do. Instead of turning them green, I want to delete them from the array. Now, what I've written here is another for loop. There are so many different ways I could tackle this problem. And in fact, I have some videos where I look at using higher order functions. There's a function, an array function called filter, and other ways to remove any particles from the array that have finished. But the approach that I'm choosing to use here is just to loop through the array backwards, starting at the end of the array, check every particle. If it's finished, use the array function splice to remove that particle and only that particle from the array. If this is totally new to you, I go through this code in detail in one of my intro to P5.js videos, removing objects from an array. But this is it. I have, should have all of the pieces now of making a particle system using a particle class and an array of particles with lifespans, removing them when they're done. Let's see what this looks like. And as you can see, the frame rate is running fairly consistently. Now, what the behavior of these particles are, what they're doing, where they should start, how they should fade away, that's really up to you. <laughs> so I would encourage you to take this code and start playing around with all the different parameters. Size, color, what's the initial velocity, what is the initial lifespan, and even maybe more importantly, how is the lifespan uh, changed? Like, for example, if I reduce the lifespan instead of by one every frame, by five, we're going to see they fade away much more quickly, and we have what looks like almost a shower going on here, a shower of particles in the P5 sketch. Two more changes before I wrap up. I'm going to remove calling this edges function. The bouncing off the edges is no longer relevant. And I think it would make sense for me to start the particles higher up in the, in the canvas. So let me put the value 20. Oops, no, 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 no. 20 for the uh, vertical position, the Y, not the X. And there we go. This is the complete particle system example. I've got a particle class. I've got an array of particles. They fade out. I remove them from the array when they fade it out. What is next? So in the next video, I want to take this idea and kind of turn it up to 11. So instead of just having a particle class, what if I think of this whole shower of particles as a particle system object? Could I have many particle systems within one sketch? That will be the topic of the next video. I hope you play around. I, I really would love to see what kinds of effects you can create just from this example alone by playing with size, color, the fading, all of that stuff. Uh, share it with me, and I'll see you in the next video.